Hello, this is Hawk Devine, and today we are going to r slash rules horror. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. I selected quite a few stories, and they will take a while to load. I should really disable tab sneezing. Unknown people are here. Hello! Hey! Hi! This is an important announcement I have to make. We found that some strange behavior has been occurring here, and with further investigation, we discovered that there has been some road roaming around this house for a time. So we are planning to shut down this orphanage. Let's say at least one day here so you can escape. One. Do not go to bedroom um six. It has become infested with and children there have either been severely or gravely injured, or even dead. Two, do not play the tape on the entrance corridor. Six kids watched it one day and four of them have committed in, in self-termination. One got missing and and the other one has severe change in their behavior. Almost like they were traumatized. Three, do not drink any water from a cup of water that isn't transparent. You can't see it and never Neither do you know what could be inside. Four. If there is strange from in the hallway, here's what you should do based on the color. Four by one. If the color is a lime green, that means that Ina is, is coming. Don't worry. Four by one point one. If the shade of green is not lime and instead of darker green, immediately go to your room and lock yourself in. Whatever the thing that's coming is, it is not Dinah. 4.2 If it's yellow, it means that one of the neutral ones is coming. Hiding is occasional since it depends on their mood. If they're smiling, smile back. If they're sad, comfort them and they will be happy again. If they're neutral, don't make eye contact with them. If they're walking slightly faster to your direction, go to your bedroom, lock the door and yell, It's cold outside! Dinah will immediately come to your location and take care of them. 4.2 If you did yell, it's cold outside and locked yourself in, do not go outside, no matter the sounds you hear. 4.3 If it's maroon, close your eyes for 5 seconds and open them again. The foam should disappear. Just know that they're shy too. 4.4 if it's pink, quickly get a toy, place it in the hallway, and lock yourself in your bedroom. She always wants something new to play with and will not hesitate to play with your head. 4.5 If a white foam and a paper with the number 99 appears, scratch paper immediately. It can be attracted by that number. 5 don't go outside. It will be waiting for you until the day is over. Six. Once it's eleven p. Once it's eleven at night, go sleep. The sleepers want to make sure everyone sleeps before midnight. Six point one. Once you make up, make for a run for it and immediately go outside. No matter what you pass through while running, do not let them catch you at any cost. Dinah will be waiting there for you. 6.2 oh, We have the classic um, Reddit it is having bad internet at a time. I love when this issue happens. It might be because of all the tabs I have open. Is your skin itchy? Suddenly your skin is itching. You just can't ignore the irritation. The more you scratch it, the itchier it gets. Follow these rules to survive. 
Oh, I hate the UDA A rolls. They're just not as fun. One, do not scratch. The more you scratch, the edge you will get. You wouldn't realize when you start are you clawing out. Uh, you splash with blood all over you and your hands and so you start clawing out the bone. Obviously, we don't want that. Two, apply some kind of facial cream or moisturizer. It will reduce the itch. Three, do not try to burn your skin. It will make matters worse. We know because people have tried it. Four, do not try to cut off your skin. That didn't make matters any better either. Five, avoid physical contact with others. This unnatural spreads by physical touch from one person to another. Six, just ignore it. You need to do it to survive. Seven, it should be gone after one day. So hold on and don't give up. From the UDA. <sighs> Rules for orbit for urban exploration. I've been urban exploring for seven years now. There's nothing quite light like exploring an empty, abandoned crack house or finding a series of elaborate empty and underground tunnels beneath a dead mall. But you have to know what you're doing out here. Luckily for you, I unfortunately know from experience. The first thing to remember, your flashlight is your best friend and also your worst enemy. You need to be able to see where you're going. There aren't, aren't very many things worse than falling into a small hole you felt to see and being completely defenseless as you wait for Paramax to arrive and deal with your broken leg. What is worse, however, is seeing something no man was meant to see and having to run away with the knowledge that it saw you too. To put a short tweet, the first and most important rule is to only point your light so you can see any potential hazards in your way. And things of interest like graffiti and dead animals. And speaking of things no man was meant to see, if your gut tells you something is wrong, for the love of all the gods, listen to it. If nothing else in this post sticks with you, remember that every feeling of, a, of unease is there for a reason. If you feel like you're being watched, you almost certainly are. Have an escape plan in advance, and at the first time of trouble, use it. Which brings us to the next thing. Never go alone. Ideally, you want to go in groups of three. Why three? Simple. There's a bait, the distraction, and the one who lives to see another day. Try to make sure you're the one who lives. As being the bait is horrible, and being the distraction is even worse. Going back to the topic of flashlights. Never, under any circumstances, should you shine your light in a window. Unless you're certain you know what's going on the other side. I mean, what's on the other side. It sounds counterintuitive, I know, but think of it like this. If you don't know what's on the other side, there are only two possibilities. The first is that there is nothing. The second is that there is something. And trust me when I say neither of those options are good for you. Nothing isn't always nothing, and something is never, ever a good thing. Try to stay small with what you explore. Is it exciting to find underground tunnels that have been abandoned for years and to stretch under the entire city you're in? Absolutely. But are those tunnels safe? Absolutely not. I don't care who it was that told you, but you don't know it can't hurt you. It can, it will, and it won't stop with hurting you. That being said, I bet you'll get bored of smaller places and decide to explore an old apartment complex or a dirt mall. If you go there, the only thing I can say is good luck and don't go alone. Make sure you have battery packs for your fun with you. If you're lucky, nothing will follow you out of the place you're in. And you can call cabins of having to run for dear life until you get to your home that's 20 miles away. And finally, if the cops come for you, and they eventually will, as trespassing isn't exactly legal, hide and get away as fast as possible. I don't care what you have to leave behind, it could be your best friend or your car with your life savings, hidden in a trunk. Nothing is worth the risk that those police 
These aren't actually the police. Very true. And also, you probably shouldn't explore urban buildings or stuff like that. It is actually dangerous. Anyway, on to the next rule story. We got a girls night! Hey babes, thank you so much for accepting my invite to girls night! Oh my god, they, they spell it so annoyingly. Avi, we have some rules. <laughs> Just follow these so tonight can be epic. One, please don't invite any boys it's over, especially my nasty little brother. Two, bring some candy. It's not a party without candy. Three, keep the door shut and locked because my brother loves to snoop in my room. Four, by the way, my window doesn't shut all the way, so please, please, please put a blanket or something over it when we go to sleep. Five, if you're outside my room and you see my little brother, don't talk to him. He's so freaky. <laughs> Six, actually, just don't leave my room without me. Seven, actually, just don't leave my room. Eight, when my brother tries to crawl through the window, close your eyes tight and pretend to be asleep. Nine, don't talk to my brother. Ten, if your brother asks for help, don't help him. He doesn't mean it. 11. He knows what we did and he's gonna tell. 12. He's a freaking snitch. Don't talk to him. 13. He's the only one that knows. 14. It's your fault for telling him. 15. I didn't mean to hurt it hurt. It was dark and the road was slippery. Oh, that got... Dark quick. I went from really high energy to something really depressing. Anyway, vengeance and guilt. I know you can hear me. I'm in your head after all. A target of your wildest imaginations. Could I be just your internal voice? Or perhaps someone you've once known? The possibilities are endless, but that doesn't matter. You see, I know you're sad, depressed, and most importantly, full of anger and disgust of someone. I know who that someone is. And I'll teach you how to display your emotions out towards that someone. Then you will be free of pain and sadness. Step number one, do it while it's nighttime. Unless people will be there to hear or see you express your emotions. The less witnesses, the better. Step number two, do it with something. It can be a toy, a glass, a shiv. Just do it with something that isn't your skin and flesh. Step number three. Do it while they're asleep. Sit in the corner of a room. Watch them dream or snore. Tell them how you hate them. Despise them. Or how you'll swear you'll slit their throat. Take it all out. Step number four. Do it with every form of exit locked. Nothing can get out. Not even one single sound. Step number five, do it without distracting yourself. Even the smallest of distractions can lead to an escape. Step number six, do it all quietly. Everything you do it should be really, really carefully. Hmm. 
Step number seven. Do it after making sure the room isn't being watched by someone else. This includes things such as cameras or windows. Step number eight. Do it. You prepared everything. Take it out on them. Stab them. Strangle them. Feel the pleasure of their muffled moans of terror as their soul leaves their body. Their eyes turn and close and their bodies suddenly stop, stops moving. Laying still. Motionless. What have you done? Wow, okay. By the way, if you have a disagreement with someone, don't do this. It doesn't blatantly say it's Maranto Osef 8, but don't do any of this. This is sus, and it's incredibly illegal, and I don't condone any of that. Mostly because I don't want to be banned off the entire internet, but also because it's just not how we deal with problems. Anyway, next story. You signed the contract. Well, if you're reading this, you've signed up. Uh, you signed up to join us in the factory. We hope you're as excited as we are to for you to join the work environment. Remember, you have to be working for us for the next seven months. You can renew your work for us. If you enjoyed your time here. First off, the factory can be quite a dangerous place to work. So we hope you choose to read this. It's no. I'll just say so you know, you're stuck here. If you ever think to try and leave during your contract, our friendly executives will pay you a visit. The rules below pretty much cover a typical shift in the factory. 1. Upon entering the factory, you will encounter large stacks of paper being printed and sent out by some of our, our older employees who have outgrown the factory work. It is very important that you don't knock those down. Doing so would anger our executives and slow production. Two, after you leave that room, please put on your company blindfold immediately. Not doing so would result in you knowing something you don't want to. Three, one of our executives will ask for your ID in number. Once you've replied, he will lead you through the many rooms, rooms of the factory workers to your workstation. Do not let go of his hand or take the blindfold off. Four. Once you are in and your secluded booth, you might take your blindfold off for a, a brief moment. During this 15 minute period, you may clock in by tapping your ID against the station on the wall. Then you may complete any documents you want to use via your computer. It's important you do not take more than 15 minutes. We will be unhappy if our productivity is low. <sighs> Five, place your blindfold once again on your head and lift up the hatch in front of your work desk. Reach out for the conveyor belt and grab whatever falls from the chute. Your task is to hollow these things out. Do not do anything else. It should be hole in the middle of all of these large objects. Tear everything out of it. Of course, with other jobs on the floor. Whereas above you like slicing them or below you like separating large objects from small ones. You may consult with your boss if you ever feel the need to switch. Six. Ignore any movements or sounds these objects make. If they move, grab as much as you can from the center cavity. If they make noise, ignore it. Seven. Once you have fully hauled an object, Place both the empty husk and the objects inside on conveyor belt. They will be wh illed out and, and replaced soon. 
8. After your shift ends, the hatch should give you a warning before closing. Tap out without removing your blindfold and wipe your desk off with a, a bath towel next to you. An executive will lead you out shortly. This covers the uh, basics of single shift. Now we will go over some special cases. 9. If your ID taffer ever starts to beep, a ladder will drop from the ceiling. This means you have done something wrong and must meet with the boss. Take off the blindfold and climb the ladder. Once you are up, enter the line of other people standing there. Once it is your turn, climb into the e conveyor belt. Lay down with your arms at your sides. You will be brought to the boss shortly. Ten. If the building's alarms ring out, this means something has gone wrong. Exit your cubicle. Keep your blindfold on as you will grab the handrails and lead yourself back to the exit. Leave and return next week. The problem should be solved by then. Eleven. If you're screaming in quick footsteps and hall, I'll lock your cubicle door and continue work as normal. Twelve. If the conveyor ever stops, you get to go home early and all the objects you have been as all the objects you have been sorted and sent out. Good work. Enjoy the rest of your, your day off with the full shift's pay. Thirteen, if you ever hear police sirens, climb up the ladder we have dropped for you. Ignore any senses of heat or warm temperatures you may feel from this upper area. A trapdoor is waiting to take you back to the exit safely, so the kind officers can see our factory. Ignore any noises you may hear from the trapdoor. When it is your turn, lay on the trapdoor and drop any items you may have on your you beside it. They will be returned to you. And let yourself be whisked away, safe and sound, to the exit. Don't scream if you feel hot. That's just the inner workings of the factory heating up. It is perfectly safe. <sighs> 14. After your 7 months are over, you can either get your final paycheck by entering the factory, walking with the spiral staircase on and get off once you are in the area above where you go to meet the boss, lay on the conveyor as you would uh, if you've done something wrong. Don't worry, no consequences wait for you at the boss. This time you'll be re rewarded. Just lay down and relax. Or you could renew your contract by simply showing up for work normally the next day. We hope you enjoy your work here. Just remember, you must stay at for at least seven months. You signed the contract, employee. So enjoy your work here in the factory. Ah. <sighs> You were led away from home. Let me help you away from it. It's dark. The forest shudders. We both know whatever lurks out there hates our guts. Listen, I like you. I really do. So I'm going to help you get out of this wretched place. Rule number one. Quiet down. Noise is dangerous. Avoid branches or leaves on the coarse dirt. Rule number two. Ignore that soft singing. That beautiful lullaby you hear. 
I don't care if you're attracted by it. Just ignore it. Rule number three. If the air around you thickens, stay still. You'll see figures in the corner of your eyes, but keep in mind, those things aren't real. They're not you or anyone you love or know. Rule number four. Avoid campsites, especially if there is fire. Smoke is its fool. Rule number five. For the love of God, do not cry nor scream. Rule number six. North is where the exit of the forest is at. That's where you should go. Rule number seven. If there is a forest fire, you've met your doom. There now, go. I don't want to see you on Missing People's Poster. You have a long life ahead of you. You're someone I look forward to bond with. I mean it, but now you have to go. I'll meet up with you outside the forest. If you make it, that is. And that was a Rules Horror Story. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!